this girl might have better vocals and be a better singer and a better performer than this girl. So the question is, why is she at home singing in her shower and why is she on tour yet again uh, with a very successful, t successful career overall? Well, back in the, in the day, in fact, it was one of my groups that I had here in Atlanta, um, we did tours with Britney Spears. So since we were producing part of this, my, I got to get my artists on the road opening for Britney and opening for 25,000 people a night, and we rolled as part of that tour as the opening act. But along that way, and it was the same management team, Johnny Wright, it was the same management team that did at the time NSYNC and Backstreet and other groups that I was working with as well on the business side. But here's what I watched, because it really made me think about it. One day on the tour at a rehearsal, watching Britney, and no disrespect, um, she's, she's had a great career, but I literally was thinking, watching, she is not a great, she's not Whitney Houston's voice in its prime. She's no great performer, okay? There are literally girls singing in their showers all over the country right now that are better performers. So then why did she win, and why didn't they? And I started wondering about that, and I saw the answer. And the answer was, because this was a product wrapped inside of a business. She had the best team, okay? When I went to the first meeting in the early NSYNC days, and I walked into the room and there was all these, uh, can I say this? Can I say uncool white people in the room? <laughs> there are all these people that, that people look like me, and I was like, what are these people doing here? You know, this is, this is rock, right? In this case, it was pop, but in all seriousness, there were a bunch of people, and I said, so introduce me to everybody. This is the early days. You know who was in the room? A lawyer. Do you know who else was in the room? An accountant. In the room were some marketing people, okay? There were all these other people that have nothing to do with the stage production, the song, or anything. But what was smart was the team realized that if we have the best team, okay? Unfortunately, I was also thinking about this watching the Braves get their ass kicked last <laughs> night. When you have the best team where every position is well played, where your right fielder can throw somebody out at the plate, where your pitcher, even in the seventh inning, is still mowing down batters, right? It's all different positions, but you need all of them to win. If you're weak in any area on your team, your team doesn't win. It doesn't matter if you're the best pitcher in the league if no one on your team can hit and nobody can throw the ball to the plate. It is no different for you in the entertainment business. You have to be on a team. So what I realized is Brittany's not the most talented artist that we've ever seen, but she was smart enough, at least, to get on a team. And this team brought in the best marketing people. They brought in the best design people for the shows and, and, you know, and the performance part of it. They brought in promoters. They had a strong legal team. They had a strong financial team. What they did was round up a team and say, if every position on the field is filled by an all-star player, our team will probably win the game. What the mistake people make is they say, I am so talented, how can I not be successful? Because you can't do it on your own. You have to be part of a business and a company, and you can't think, talent, this is what I always, the way I always think of it, talent is the price of admission, okay? But it will not make you successful. Talent will, get, will open the door. Somebody would say, she's pretty talented, come on in. Everything that happens after that is a function of how strong of a team you have assembled around you to make everything else happen. Okay? If you get an opportunity, whether it's a tour, a concert, a, you know, we used to do things for my artists because I'm a business guy. We did sponsorships. I had Disney sponsor a tour. We were in the pop business, right? I had Microsoft sponsor us for a while. We did a Macy's thing. People might laugh at those, but my artists got paid and they got paid well. My, my artists wound up doing, we did the soundtrack uh, to the Lizzie McGuire movie. Uh, and everybody laughed, but I have a triple platinum album in my office because that soundtrack actually went triple platinum. My artists didn't laugh when they got the checks and when they got calls from Disney to do the soundtrack for the 102 Dalmatians movie and by Nickelodeon to do, they did the soundtrack for Kim Possible, the cartoon. This is all part of the business, right? You're in a business and you need every opportunity you can to show your stuff and to deliver your product, and you need business people around you and a team. So Brittany was successful because she was good enough, but because she was on the best team. She was on a team that knew how to create, launch, and build an artist. So that's the point I was just making. You're a startup. And let's talk a little bit today about startups. But I'm going to tell you another interesting story. One day, I get this call from this guy, from Nelly. And they're like, when are you going to be out here? He was producing his album out in Santa, a studio in Santa Monica. And I said, I'll be out there in two weeks, why? And they said, well, Nelly wants to sit down and talk to you about something. 
So I go out there and I walk in. I'm thrilled. I'm a big fan. I love his music. I'm pretty excited to meet with Nelly. And when I walk in, the first thing Nelly does is put his arm around me and say, oh, Mr. Hoffman, get this man something to drink. Get a chair. And I was like, whoa, wait, time out. I'm the fan. You're the star. And he said, well, I'm the performer, but you're the business guy. And I don't see my future lasting a long time if I don't have a good business team. And I love one of the things that Nelly said that day was he pointed up. He said, see those? And I said, the lights? And he said, yeah. And he said, any day now, the lights are going to go off over me, and they're going to go on under some new, new young rapper that everybody loves, and it's over. And he said, so i got to make whatever I can get done now last the rest of my life, and that's a business problem, not a music problem. That is a smart guy. You want to know why he's where he is in the music industry? Because he was smart enough to say, I need to hook up with some people that can help the business side of my business, and he did that from the beginning. I actually think that's why... I was there in the early Apple Bottom days, was instead of his friends from his childhood trying to launch a clothing label, he went and did business with some people that knew how to launch a clothing label. You guys know that a lot of things artists do, they bring their best friends in, you can't run a business that way. I wouldn't have probably gone and got my cousin, who's never worked on the internet, and said, hey, you want to be VP of marketing at Priceline, right? He doesn't know the business. When you're serious about business, you take yourself seriously, and you try to get on the best team that you possibly can. So I have a lot of respect for somebody who reaches out himself and says, how do I build people around me um, that, that uh, give me that opportunity? Um, so let me give you some steps on how to uh, create a startup. And, uh, you know, I'm, I'm going pretty fast because I'm really hoping, I think we have a mic there. I don't know where Shaq went, but I hope we can do some questions afterwards because I won't take the, the whole time here so I can hear from you guys and we can talk about it. But here's the first thing, which is to create the best product you possibly can, okay? And here's why that's important. Uh, again, so let's take an example like an internet product. If we had launched Priceline and you got on it and it crashed, and it had errors in it, and it couldn't read your credit card, and you couldn't buy an airline ticket, would you come back? No. And if somebody, if we called you back and said, oh, okay, we fixed everything, try it again. People don't do that. I tried it, Jeff. Your site, your site sucked. I don't want to use your business. I know you. I remember. You say, you remember me? Yeah, you're the guy whose site sucked, okay? That's what people remember. You don't get a lot of second chances in this business. In fact, it's really hard to get a first chance. So what happens when you get a first chance in this business? You better crush it. Okay, on day one, you better come with your A game ready to play. So a lot of times, when you're just talking to people sort of that you know, it's okay to show them your unfinished product, what you're working on, etc. But what I'm talking about is in the end, if you want to launch your career, you've got to bring the best product. So I always tell people, I always ask people questions, and I'm amazed at the answer. When I get demos on a song, and I say, is this the best performance you've ever given? And people say, well, no. And I say, why are you giving it to me? Why don't you just keep doing it until it's the best damn song you've ever written, the best vocal performance you've ever given, the best production, music, and everything that you've ever heard? That doesn't necessarily mean you can afford a studio and complete engineering and mastering. But it just means with the resources you have, is this the best you could possibly do? And if it's not, do not start passing it around. Don't come until you're ready to come when you have your best possible product. So when I ask people that question, like I said, I'm amazed when they say, no, I can do better. And I'm thinking, so you want an audition with your B game? You tell me you can do better, but you didn't? I mean, what does that say about so many things about you? So this is the first most important step, is you've got to play the song and quit listening to yourself. Listen to other people. The test that we do when we go out and listen to new artists is it's a brand new artist, it's new music or a new producer. It's the first time we just bring some friends with us. And if people, when we're walking out, are singing the song, I say, like, wait, you, that, you've never heard that song before. And they're already singing the, the chorus to it, or they know a few words, or they're bopping to the beat. That was a good song, okay? If everybody is sitting there and you think it's great and no one else seems to like it, we're going to talk about picking the right audience. It's just not your best. So don't step out into the world until you firmly say your you know, blood, sweat, and tears exhausted, and you say, this is the best I can do in the circumstances. Right? What I mean is you may not have a studio, you may not have you know, studio musicians. With whatever you have, is this the best you can do? The best possible product is important before you step out the door, and that's no different, like I said, than when you launch an internet company or anything else. If your product doesn't work, people don't come back. When you call again and say, okay, okay, this time I'm singing it without my voice cracking, no one really wants to hear it again. There's another line out the door of people that may have come ready. So that's, I think, the first lesson. And I just showed this because sometimes people tell me, 
You know, we were talking just before this out there about the fact that the, uh, you know, the music industry, the, the big labels, the big companies, et cetera. In fact, when I do this talk on, I, I speak around the world on innovation. And one of the things that I talk about all the time is the fact that, that seeing the future and riding the future and looking at a world bigger than yours, right? So you're in the music business, but you should constantly be reading articles about technology, right? And, and we just talked about that uh, when we did this interview over here. You should, be you should be reading articles about technology, about internet consume about internet companies, about consumer trends. You know what I do twice a day every day? I go to the home page of Yahoo and I look at the top 10 searches at any minute on the internet. You know what I'm trying to figure out? What are people thinking about? What do they care about? What are they wondering about? I look at that every day, twice a day. You know what you're trying to do? I don't even know what I'm looking for, but you know what happens? You as, as a business person or an artist, you get very in tune with the world around you by watching the world around you. So if I read the top 10 internet searches every day, I've had customers say to me, man, how does it seem to, that you always know what we're feeling before we know it? You know why? Because I watch all the time. I don't just study my business. So you should be reading about technology. You should be reading about these other things, <coughs> about trends, about what other companies are doing. If every, here's an example. If everybody's suddenly using Pinterest and you don't care, take a minute and figure out what it is and why they love it. Because something about the reason that everybody loves it might be useful to you when you are marketing your products. That makes sense to everybody? And you'll miss that if all you ever do is look at yourself in the mirror or your business in the mirror. So when people tell me, well, I can't afford a studio and I can't afford all this stuff, it seems like every time I'm visiting, and I go visit a lot of basement studios right here in Atlanta, people say, come hear my music, and I go to their house and their studio is their basement, and it seems like every time I go out, somebody's got some software tool, and I say, what is that? And they say, oh, it's a new tool, production tool that just came out, right? Whether it was the first time you saw a Fruit Loops or an Auto-Tune product or whatever it was, there's always new technology that improves your ability to generate high production value with really low cost on your own computer. You will not know that if you are not constantly looking and just Googling the words production tools, right? And every time I find something and I click on it, and I was like, what is this? And it just came out yesterday. So no one's going to call you up and introduce you to these tools, but they're out there and you've got to find them. You know why? Because you're launching a business and you're a startup. And startups got to look for all the help that they can get out there. So find a way. The other thing I'll say about this is the networking piece. In an event like this, if you guys come here, so if you two came in here together, and you sit together and you hang out together at the brink and you eat lunch together, then shame on you. Because you know what you should be doing? You should be walking around everybody in here and meeting somebody that you don't know. There's somebody in this room that could be on your team tomorrow. And if you don't bother to talk to them and meet them, you miss that opportunity. So again, you're launching a business. Get out, get involved, and talk to people. Who knows who's out there? Now, I want to give you a kind of a marketing lesson here um, about your market. So here's another one I love. I ask people, who's going to, who, who, they show, they play their music. And I say, who's going to like your music? And you know what they say? Everyone. Just like Hawk, when we say, who's going to go to this movie? Everyone. It's not true. Everyone doesn't go to the same movie. And guess what? Everyone doesn't like the same music. So when you say that, what are you doing to yourself marketing-wise? You're diluting your product, right? You're going to try to sell one product to everybody. You don't have the money, the time, right, or the effort to do that. So what do you need to do? And I'm going to explain to you how you need to market a product using this concept called concentric circles, which is a much smarter way to market a product. Maybe someday, maybe someday everybody will listen to your music, but you don't start that way. So I'm going to show you a picture of what your goal is here. It's these guys. Okay, think about college sports. College sports fans, now this is Georgia, so it's warm. But you see in other cities, it's winter. They're naked, they're painted blue and gold, and they're standing out there screaming in, the, in their underwear. You know why? Because they love their team. They are, they are wild, they're fans. They love their business. I mean, they love their product, and they love, well, I didn't realize how young that kid was. Who painted that? And they can't even be legal. Um, and he has an L. Where is L part of either Georgia or, Bull oh, I guess Bulldogs. Bad on me. Um, usually it just says dogs. But anyway, your goal is to find this, okay? Is to find people. So let me explain the concentric circles of marketing. In the concentric circles, it's like a target. In the middle circle are people that are going to go nuts the second they hear you. They have been wandering all over looking for your, for your music. 
They think, oh my God, I love your style. This is the kind of music I like. Those people in two seconds love you. Those are people that are going to tell everybody about you. They're your street team when you didn't ask them. They're constantly trying to find out where you're performing next. Those people exist. They are not everybody. They're a small group. The problem that a lot of artists have is, well, I just don't, I don't want just a small group to listen to my music. Guess what? It starts with a small group, and it grows. So ring one is those people, is for you to sit down and figure out who is going to love my product, my music, and go crazy for it. And it's to prototype those people. Who are they? Well, they're between, I'm making this up, okay? They're between 18 and 26 years old. They tend to live in the city. Uh, they went to college, but I'm making this up, but they didn't finish. They also love this artist. They eat at this restaurant. They shop on that website. Your job is to figure out everything you know about the person that absolutely goes nuts about your music, okay? And then you're going to sell the hell out of it to the inner circle, the people that will love you the most. So if we're producing a movie, right? So Hawk here is, is an MMA fighter we're working on a movie together that's about, about mixed martial arts, right? And about that kind of fighting. So who would we market to first? People that already like the sport. Why would you spend your time telling somebody, yes, my music is good. No, it isn't. Yes, it is. No, it isn't. Are you kidding? You don't have enough time in the day. You want somebody that you walk up and you say, hi, I'm, and before you finish the sentence, they say, oh my God, that's you. I love your music. Okay, F define the people that are going to buy your music now, going to tell everybody and go crazy about it, and circle one and only market to them. What do I mean by that? Find out where they go, what events they attend, and pick up the phone and call and see if you can perform there. Find out what websites they go to and advertise your product there, your music there, do a partnership with there. Do not try to sell yourself and your product to everybody in the world. Try to sell it just to those early adopters right where they are, in the places they go, and the other things that they like. That's your job in the inner circle. They will start telling everybody in ring two, the people that might like your music but aren't so sure. So now when you start to market to them, their friends are already saying, you have got to hear this song. These, these guys are unbelievable. And guess what? Market ring three are people that say, why are you all listening to that guy? Say, have you heard him? He's amazing. They do the marketing for you. So do not make the mistake of thinking you are going to sell your product to everybody. Find the people that would paint themselves, uh, you know, these colors for you and your concert and just market the hell out of them until you have all of them and then let them start spreading out across the world.